Okay, I wanted to go through this example that you worked as homework of um, another Taylor polynomial approximation or a pair of approximations to a function of two variables. So in this example we're going to look at f of x, y equals x times e to the y plus 1 uh, for the for ordered pairs near the point 1, 0. So this is the point we're expanding about. This would be our a comma b. Alright, so what we want to do now is to uh, find the partial derivative. So we'll calculate f sub x of x, y. Uh, in this case, uh, y is a constant, so you end up with just e to the y. Derivative of 1 is 0. Uh, f sub y of x, y is equal to, well, x is a constant now, so x comes along for the ride, and then derivative of e to the y with respect to y is e to the y. Uh, now we need the second partials. So second partial with respect to x is 0. f sub y, y, and x, y is well, x e to the y, same as it was before, and f sub x y at x y is equal to e to the y. Just to double check, uh, f sub y x would be e to the y as well. Looking at that uh, first partial respect to y, double checking, so our mixed partials are equal. Okay, now we need to evaluate the function and the partials at the point one zero. So we have f evaluated at 1, 0, which plugging in 1, 0 into our original function would give us 1 times e to the 0 plus 1. e to the 0 is 1, so we get 2 out of that. Then we go ahead and evaluate f sub x at 1, 0. That's going to be e to the 0, or 1. Uh, f sub y at 1, 0 will be 1 times e to the 0, or 1. f sub x x at 1, 0. Doesn't really matter what the input is, it's always 0. f sub y y at 1, 0 is equal to 1 times e to the 0, or 1. And f sub x y at 1, 0 is equal to e to the 0, or 1. All right, so now we get to use those values to create our two Taylor polynomials. So the first one is going to be L of x, y. Let me change colors here. So L of x, y will equal, whoop, I need to put this in a different place here. So let me uh, just erase that. Oops. And let me put it down below. So L of x, y will equal f at 1, 0 plus f sub x at 1, 0 times x minus our a value, our 1, plus f sub y at 1, 0 times y minus our b value, or our 0. OK, plugging in the values we know here. Uh, f, f at 1, 0 is 2. Uh, f sub x at 1, 0 is 1. And f sub y at 1, 0 is 1 as well. So plus 1 times y. I guess I can just put times y here with this one. All right, let's move the screen up a little bit. There we go. So let's see, we've got uh, this is equal to uh, 2 plus x minus 1 plus y. That will simplify to uh, 2 minus 1 is 1 plus x plus y. And now let me just summarize what we came up with. L of x, y. 
the linear approximation or the tangent plane approximation of this function is 1 plus x plus y. Okay, so here's our first degree Taylor polynomial approximation of the function f. All right, next we're ready to approximate the second degree Taylor polynomial, the quadratic approximation of our function. So we start with just L of x, y. That will be our first uh, couple terms, of course, um, rather than having to rewrite those. Plus f sub x, x at 1, 0, the point we're interested in, over 2, times x minus 1 squared, plus f sub x, y at 1, 0. We don't put over 2 because there's two of them, the x, y, and the y, x that are the same times x minus 1 times y minus 0. And then we need to move down a little bit. Plus f sub y, y at 1, 0 over 2 times y minus 0 squared. All right, now we get to put in the values we know. So we've got uh, L of x, y, which was 1 plus x plus y. We'll replace that. Uh, expression with or that function with it the value or the expression that it represents uh, plus f sub x x let's go up and see what that was f sub x x at one zero was zero uh, f sub x y at one zero was one and f sub y y at one zero is one so we're going to use those values down here so again f sub x x at one zero is zero so you have zero over two times x minus one squared uh, plus 1 times x minus 1 times y minus 0 plus 1 over 2 times y squared. I'll just simplify that one. All right, equals, let's see, 1 plus x plus y. First term drop, or this first ter new term drops out because it's just a 0 times the whole thing. So then we have plus x minus 1 times y. plus one-half y squared. All right, so let's see here. We got one plus x plus y plus xy minus y plus one-half y squared. The two y's cancel out here, and we get one plus x plus xy plus one-half y squared. And simplifying, or just rewriting this a little bit, move down and back up again. So just bringing it together, we can see here that the quadratic approximation q of xy is equal to 1 plus x plus xy plus 1 half y squared. Okay, that's the second answer. Now what we'd like to do is to go into the applet and see that that actually verifies what we came up with here. All right, here we are in the applet, and let's go ahead and enter the function. So we have x times e to the y plus 1. If we graph that, we can sort of see what the surface looks like. We can go around it a little bit. Okay, we're interested at the point 1, 0. So that should be on here pretty well. Let's go ahead and uh, graph that point. So at a point um, 1 comma 0 comma, well at 1 0 we know the function's value is 2. So why don't we put that in there. So at the point of tangency and enter size 4 and black. Good. Okay, so there's the point. All right, now let's go ahead and put in the second function, our um, L of x, y, so 1 plus x plus y. If we graph that, we want to keep the point, yes. We get um, the plot of the tangent plane, and we can see that indeed it is the tangent plane at that point. It goes through the point on the surface, has the same slope in the x and y directions there. The surface is quite curved, so uh, this is what it's going to look like when it's curved in a couple ways. Uh, we might want to make things semi transparent, control T a little bit easier to see. Okay, or 
I suppose we can make just one of them transparent, but for now, let's just leave it alone. All right, so now what we're going to do is go ahead and add another term to it. In fact, it turns out that y gets canceled out, and we get xy plus y squared over 2. And we're going to see if this fits both uh, slopes, like the tangent plane does, but also the concavity is what we're looking for. So yes, we'll keep that point, and let's see what this looks like. So yeah, actually near that point, not very f very far away, it goes away from the surface, but near that point, we see that this purple surface seems to fit really well around the, the surface. It's got the same slopes and the same concavity. It's a little bit behind the surface there, but it's can curve the same directions in both directions. It curves around this way and over and down. And so we, in fact, at that point, have the same first and second partial derivatives. And that's where we're getting the same shape, basically, uh, from this Taylor polynomial, quadratic Taylor polynomial. If we wanted to improve this even better, we could use the applet's uh, Taylor polynomial feature and go ahead and look at it more deep in more detail. So I suppose we could do that here. Um, so I'll turn this one off. And uh, we can keep the point. Maybe we'll see if that will stay around. I'm not sure if it will or not. We go into view Taylor polynomials, um, keep the active point. Hey, sure enough, there it is. And I think we need to change the point it's centered about. So by default, it's the origin. So we're going to set the point to be 1, comma 0. OK, keep the point, yeah. All right, and there we go. There's that tangent plane. OK, and now we can now uh, move this along and see what we get. Here's the second degree. That's what we had before. Not simplified like we did, but go into the third degree. Fits even better. Fourth degree. Fifth and sixth degree. You can see it's fitting very nicely now to the surface, at least as much of it as we see. The colored portion is all the Taylor polynomial. The original function is made of just a clear wire mesh. If it's even better when we get to seventh degree. If we go further out than we need to, we can always uh, shift this left and right by grabbing it and pulling it left and right. All right, well, that's the example I wanted to show. Um, going back to our original uh, work here, hopefully uh, this makes sense. We got L of xy for this original function, and we found Q of xy for it as well. All right, well, let me know if you have any questions. Thank you.